Hey y'all, in this video I'm going to be talking about the four stages of competence when acquiring any new skill. The four stages of competence is a model that was first described by management trainer Malcolm Broadwell in 1969. The model describes the process of acquiring and subsequently mastering any new skill that we want to develop. I find this model really useful as a check-in for myself and for my clients uh, just to give reassurance to make sure that we understand that we're working on the right things at the right time. The four stages of competence are unconscious incompetence, conscious incompetence, conscious competence, and then unconscious competence. And essentially this just kind of breaks down the natural learning process that a lot of us go through. Um, and it might not be anything that's super new to you, but it might also be helpful just to kind of frame you know, where you're at. Because I do find that when I'm teaching clients, there are times where they feel they should be further along than they are, or they are comparing themselves to other people and they would like to be in that same level or stage of development. But the problem is that we all have to kind of go through these four steps. You know, at the very beginning when we're learning something, the first barrier that we have to break through when we're unconsciously incompetent is, you know, first, is this new skill going to be even useful? A lot of times we don't know enough to even see the inherent value in whatever this thing is that we might be slightly interested in wanting to learn. So developing buy-in and, and really getting an understanding of the usefulness of the skill is that first stage development. And this is also where I like to start instilling new habits because these are gonna be built on for the subsequent stages um, and moving forward into mastery or, or into adopting this skill into your just life. So at the beginning for unconscious incompetence when we're just brand new to a skill, we're trying to instill a habit that we can commit to that's sustainable um, that might feel a little challenging but not overwhelming. So if you're starting out with something, I don't think very many people could commit to learning a new language seven days a week, uh, every week of the year, right away, unless they were in the, the country that they're trying to learn from. And I think that's one of the barriers that's often difficult with learning a skill like learning a new language where maybe you're not gonna be exposed to it every day. But you can still make improvements if you are doing something on some consistent basis. We're also trying to recognize our own incompetence at this stage. And this is really uncomfortable for a lot of us because we have to kind of accept that we're not good at this thing yet. We're going to be good at it eventually, but we have to start off somewhere. So the three things for uncon unconscious incompetence to, to bust through and to work on is recognizing the usefulness of the skill, recognizing our own incompetence at this stage in development, and then also building in habits that are going to be sustainable for a long period of time. The second stage is conscious incompetence. And this is the stage where we're finally becoming a little bit more aware of our shortcomings in this new skill. And people can often have really severe emotional reactions at this stage because it's, it's scary. You know, we have to accept, again, coming from that first stage, but even more so now because now we're, we're aware, but we have to accept uh, that we're just not very good at this thing yet. And it's perfectly natural. We're supposed to not be good at things immediately. Even people who you see learn quickly or, or, you, or who you perceive as being really rapid learners or acquiring new skills, likely they've gone through that uncomfortable phase in other skill developments that may be more generalized and applicable to this new thing. Um, take a language learner, for instance. The more languages that you learn, the easier it is to keep acquiring new languages. Now, if you take someone who's learned only Romance languages and you make them make a radical departure to something that's, that's very different than the languages they've learned, maybe they're going to go through that uncomfortable stage for a little bit longer than they would if they picked up another Romance language. So skills can be generalizable and they can move across uh, to other skills, uh, although there is some specificity there too. So during, un during conscious incompetence, our biggest trial is allowing ourselves to make mistakes. We need to go through the process of making mistakes routinely. We need to be trying to get better, but we also need to try not to avoid the things that we're not good at or the things that we need to develop. That's often the, the trap that I see people fall into where they find one little aspect of this new broader skill that maybe they pick up a little bit quicker than the other portions of it. And then they kind of just keep repeating that one thing over and over again. I saw this with guitar a lot where people would, you know, pick up some aspect of the guitar. Maybe they were just really good with scales. And so then they would just keep playing scales over and over and over again, which is great. They're developing, they're mastering that skill. But if you want to master the guitar, it just has many more skills involved within it to master the entire instrument. 
you need to be able to break outside of just that one phase and then do the other things that are uncomfortable for you. Don't compare yourself to others. Take your time to build your foundations. This is the stage where you're making mistakes, you're supposed to be making mistakes, you're supposed to be a little uncomfortable at this stage, and you're just opening up this new level of awareness that you didn't have before. It's okay to feel incompetent at this stage because we're gonna move forward to the next stage given enough time and practice. During this stage, I would also recommend to hone in on your habit and address any potential pain points. So in the first stage, you were, you were working to just develop the initial habit. You were trying to pick something that you could, you could commit to, that you could sustain. But maybe you didn't know enough about that skill to make an accurate assessment of what you could actually commit to. Maybe you can do more. Maybe you can do less. Maybe as you're going through this, you're getting more motivated. Or maybe things are getting more challenging. It's important to address those pain points and make adjustments that are realistic for you. So if you start off doing more than what you can handle, it's okay to pull back a little bit so long as you can make sure that you're being consistent with the thing. The key point here is not pulling back so much that we quit or not pushing too far ahead that we start missing our practice sessions and letting those stack up. We want to build up consistency within the practice and we also want to build up consistency within our mental wins. I want to feel good about the things that I'm accomplishing with this skill development, this skill, because right now the, the good feelings of being good at that thing aren't really coming along yet, but they will in the future. So moving forward, after we've been incompetent for a long enough period of time, we've been practicing these mistakes and, and working to get better and better at them, we're going to see some of these uh, problems are starting to get solved a little bit more easily. Now, albeit with maybe a lot of focus still, we, we probably still have to think really hard and, and, and concentrate on the tasks that we're trying to accomplish, but we can solve it now. We can start to, to pick apart little pieces of this bigger puzzle and it starts to feel good. Now, this is another stage where people get stuck. Work to develop focus and concentration in this stage. It's important that we focus on breaking bigger problems down into smaller chunks and then concentrate on those smaller chunks. And again, this shouldn't be overwhelming, right? We should be breaking them down into small enough chunks that we can concentrate on them in a challenging but not overwhelming way. Practice patience. Getting through this stage means you're gonna have to solve many, many problems. To master something or to be able to, to step into this more unconscious state of this, this new skill that you're forming, you need to have solved tons and tons of problems so that whenever the new problem comes up, you can either recognize it as something that you've already solved or you can recognize it as a, a close relative to something that you've already solved. So it doesn't take any nearly as long or nearly as much uh, conscious effort to be able to solve again. So through this stage, certain problems are going to become easier and easier to solve. Start passing those off onto the unconscious practice and start to get used to what that feels like. When you're doing this, still make time in your habit to practice things consciously. I think it's important to practice both at the same time, although at this stage, generally, you want to spend a little bit more time still being conscious. Keep practicing patience. As more and more of these skills move into this unconscious stage, you might find that you're able to just kind of accomplish things with relative ease or it might feel easier than it did when you were first learning this skill. For me, this is my toughest stage because whenever I start viewing things as easy, especially because we were just coming from this, un this unconscious to really conscious and then focusing on developing this concentration, we don't really need to concentrate that hard in this stage, uh, nor do we need to break big problems down into smaller problems. Sometimes now we can abstract our thinking away to uh, thinking about the larger problems and then all the underlying uh, mechanics kind of solve themselves at this point because we've solved them so many times before. For me, that relative ease was difficult in accepting as being an advancement versus a regression. I think in this stage, the trial that we're overcoming is a little bit more subtle. In this stage, the trial is long-term sustainability with this new skill, with this new habit that you're, you're forming or that you've formed. Things can start to feel easy and at the same time, you can start to become more and more aware of how much more there is to learn. And this is my problem with the concept of mastery. I've met many people who I would view as masters in their craft who've been doing whatever it is that they're, that they're focused on for decades and they're immensely talented and skilled at whatever it is that, they're, that we're talking about. I've, I've met musicians, I've met coaches, I've met teachers, um, I've met business owners, I've met numerous people in many different professions 
And the thing that's common amongst all of them is that they're still learning. They're still working on stuff. So this concept of mastery doesn't mean that we get to stay unconscious forever. It doesn't mean that now we've mastered this thing and we get to just be in flow for you know every single time that we touch this thing. No, we're going to come back to things that we don't know that we don't know and then we're going to develop other little aspects, but we get better and better at this process as we go along. And some of the broader skills that are involved in this and whatever craft that you're developing are going to help you along the way and make things easier and easier to learn. In fact, I'll link a video in the, in this, in the description of this piano player who picks up a left hand uh, uh, pattern over the course of a few practice sessions. Um, and it's not the most complicated pattern, but it's still complicated. And to be able to get it to where it's automated and he's not having to think about it at all, it's beautiful to watch him kind of step through this entire, these entire stages. But he learns it faster than someone who's, say, a month into learning piano. He has all these other skills that are supporting this new, smaller, individual skill that goes into the whole. So in this last stage, it's all about patience and consistency over a long period of time. If you've already decided that this skill is useful for you, and that you want it to be a part of your life, then at this stage, it's important to really hone in and hold on to the habit that you form. Practice being patient still. Practice being okay with maybe not rapidly acquiring a bunch of new skills because there's not as many maybe for you to learn at that moment. Right? Now is the time to start enjoying the fruits of your labor, but to continue to maintain this habit for the rest of your life, hopefully, or for however long you want to maintain it. So those are the four stages of competence. Um, this is really just a, a really broad overview, and I'd be lying if I said it didn't feel a little reductionist to me. I, I, I do think that it's a little bit more nuanced than just stepping from stage one to two to three to four. Like I mentioned a, a second ago, you know, you are going to go back and forth between these stages, and that's super normal. Um, I don't, I don't think you ever truly master a thing, or maybe I don't think you ever truly perfect, right? And that's that's I think that's a lot of people can agree on that. Um, so I'd be interested to hear what y'all think um, about this and um, where are you in your current stage of development? All right, y'all. See you next time.